Boom. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. boom. We're live. <laughs> You've got the music there. <laughs> okay. Jingle. I actually, Special. I actually used to have a soundboard, like uh, like a legit soundboard with like silly sounds from internet. But I, um, I have to, I have to, I have to put it together again. I, I've seen some people requesting that stuff. So you, you give it to your kid, no? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, yeah, here we go. We're we're live. Um, going to be a, b a beautiful day i believe uh it's morning here in la and it's an evening over there right over the seas yes. it's almost Life almost evening uh we have virginie bordine today uh yes. good Thank friend you. and we used to work together i'm so stoked that i could get you live uh with us here super super fun because uh i think we're gonna have quite a few uh, interesting conversations going on over the stream and um yeah exactly we'll, we'll we'll get to hear some questions from from the audience too uh so, so you're saying that we need to be clever <laughs> now we can be silly as as we want to it's all good it's all good so um it's but yeah anyways let, let's maybe start with like what i usually start with and make it super easy for for all of us you know uh get the conversation going for anyone who's, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people that are listening to us might already know who you are, but for those who don't, you know, it'll be it'll be just good introduction, sort of let you just let them know uh, what's, what's going on there. Is it to me now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you want? You want uh, when I was eight, when I was uh, uh, twenty, when I started to let's draw? Start, let's start with the moment you were born. What was in your <laughs> what was in your mind? <laughs> Once upon a time. Um, no, uh, well, you know what? I got lucky. I got lucky because I I, I was born in a creative family. I had a uh, father who was um, doing art crafts, advertising agency, all kind of sort of things. And my mother, she basically, um, she was an, a musician, uh, illustrator, and mm -hmm. uh, she basically transformed the house into kind of uh, a wild, uh, I don't know, mess of, uh, let's, let's, I've got a friend and he's a puppet maker, let's put some, do some maker, uh, puppets together, or let's do some uh, jam, music jams, and there was constantly a lot of artists in, in the home. Mm -hmm. so I grew up in that environment and uh, I was watching her drawing so at the age of four I was doing perspective and I was doing fade for the sky you know when the kids are doing just blue line so I, I kind of like it was a trick you know I, it's, so that's it it's, um, when you're born in it it's, uh, you learn without making any effort and, um, and after I think normal study would be too much work right <laughs> not enough so you just go into an art school because then you, you just enjoy you know what is easy for you and that's it you know right on so so what was first was walking or, or drawing <laughs> was perspective drawing or walking what was first <laughs> I, I don't know this one i don't know this one but <laughs> drawing can be very very early and, and therefore, when you draw early, you kind of leave it early as well. Like, I can't say I'm drawing at these days. Now I'm art directing. I've, I've kind of gotten a different take on it. And, I, you know, when, when you, you get all the techniques there mm -hmm. at the time, because techniques evolve, and if you, either you spend all your days, like, trying to catch up with the forever uh, growing in, you know, softwares and possibilities and all that. Yeah. Or, or, or you just focus on, on something else. Uh, for me, it was ideas. Um, and when I was doing an art school, I kind of, um, basically what happened, um, I, was, I, I was doing advertising, you know, study. And I kind of gang with the best guy in the room. Uh, so we were the best guy there. And we would work at night, doing white night work, because we were working like mad. And we would share our skill set already. Right. And 
And that, I think, it started it all. Because working with the guy who was drawing like, drawing like a god at the time for, you know, our little group. Yeah. And he was like having tons of ideas and, you know, the teacher that would give us constantly like the, the cool job for uh, the first client that comes to a school, they want to have something for free and, you know. So yeah. you get this kind of like momentum of co-creation and it's so fun that basically you want to emulate again and again the same emotion, you know, this kind of love. Yeah, yeah. Working with the other, it's like you end up doing something way better than you could have done on your own. And, and it just pushes you constantly. So I think I, I still have, I mean, like I'm carrying doing it, basically. Yeah, so I mean... When we worked together, it was it was exactly that dynamic. So I can I can I can see because you were trying to keep that dynamic in between the teams. Was what was yep. really interesting uh, when when I got to work with you on Guardians of the Galaxy and and X Men was that up until that moment, I don't think I had any projects that I worked on that there was so much collaborative effort towards creating mm. something. Right? It was more. Usually when you're hired uh, for a job, whether it's games or films, um, you're kind of working on, on your own thing. You get your tasks and sort of like you own that realm. And then sort of like it's a very standard, very conservative sort of way of working where, all right, this is my thing. I'm going to design it and then my production designer is going to sign it off and blah, blah, blah. Right. Whereas when I worked with you guys, it was it was like flip, you know. Like, whoa, what's going on here? <laughs> I'm working with JAMA and I'm working with those guys. And, you know, yeah. uh, who was the, who, who else was there? Stefan, right? S Stefan? Yes. Stefan? No, Stefan was remote. He, he'd been there for many, many years, but it was already, he always been remote. Stefan yeah, was yeah. Uh, there was like uh, Mark Tompkins. There was uh, Gerald Blaise, who now is at an island in your side of the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there was uh, Stephen Wong. There was like, uh, there was um, also, uh, oh my God, uh, Andre Radovichev. Yeah. Um, and everyone, there was also Matt Alsop at the moment, at, at some point. Um, everyone has, has a, a, a gorgeous talent. And there was a, a something favorite also that they like to do best, you know. So everyone had their own field and the, the fun was to mix it all. Yeah, you know? yeah. I remember when you sent me like files from JAMA and I was like, what, what on earth, <laughs> what on earth is going on there? It's like, damn. <laughs> no, that, that was, that's for me, it's, that's pure excitement and joy. Like basically I love, have a confession. I love nerds. And yeah. for me, you guys, <laughs> kind of all nerds. So, so I, I tried like JAMA. Oh yeah. I've done like scientific study and, and actually, he didn't know what many nuclear things, you know. It would, you know, it would do something that that makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. oh, I love that. So I would tap on that. There was Gerald, uh, who was like the guy who knew everything about Marvel. So like, you know, you have to prov provide a lot of things very fast, and I need people who knows. I can't, I can't spend two weeks learning reading all the comics. I don't yeah. have that luxury of time, you know. Exactly. So I was like, well, could you could you give me could you give me a profile of each character, please? And then in like no time, you've got all the variations of which comic, what is happening there, what's happening here, and this saves so much time. And it's so great to have that bulk of knowledge. So for me, it's like it's just fun after you know the, to to um, get get little geniuses there. Like hey, your turn, you know. <laughs> Say what you have to say. <laughs> that yeah. that's that was pure pleasure, and uh, I think they all recognized that they have something to bring on the table, and that's where you got the emulation going, and that's where people have fun. When we went to see uh, Charlie, the production designer, we basically had the luxury to work uh, during. <laughs> I say luxury uh, during Christmas time. <laughs> 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 Luxury of Christmas time work. <laughs> there, was, there was no one. There was no one at the time. There was right. no 
supervisor. They were, they were just artists who had fun. And when they all came back from, from Christmas uh, holidays and, and uh, New Year holidays, I just went to that room to present everything to, to the production designer. And I lined up a ton of drawings. And basically, I couldn't have stopped them. Like, Stefan was uh, like crazy as well, like having fun doing so many variations. There was also an um, American um, concept artist. Um, David. Now, David Hollins? Yes. Yeah, he was great. And that, that's it. It's like <laughs> Charlie entered in the room and, I, oh, um, you went wild. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> So that it's it's rare, it's rare those moments, and and if I can create them, uh, I'm super happy basically. It's, yeah. But it's, but we, I want I want these moments. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it was when we when I was with you guys on the on those shows, it was just like for the first time, um, it was collaborative work where it, you couldn't really tell. Oh, this is my concept art, you know. Like, oh, I did it, you know. I got, I got art direction, but it's, it's mine. I did it. It was, it was, you know, it was like, let's put something together for a good of, uh, of the show, and, you know, get get those ideas together, um, as a collaborative effort. So instead of just like again, like going, oh, I just gonna create it. It was like, some file, some parts of of my painting would be. You know, it would be David David designs, and we would you know go back and forth, and things that I would paint over, he would then redesign, and it would be like this sort of putting all the brains in, in one in one melting pot, and sort of like steering it, and you would be the, yeah. the person with the with the spoon like steering it, like Ooh, let's uh, see what that soup is uh, gonna give us. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's that's delicate. Uh, thing actually, um, I mean, it, for sure, is like I love doing that, and I when I could, when I had time, I would do brainstorming with the guys. Like, hey, this is the brief. This is few images. Everyone goes in his corner, and yeah. then see in two hours, and then you bring back, and then you know when someone has felt something good, we select, they carry on this one, etc., etc. Now there's. There's there's a fine balance because ultimately the concept artists want to also express themselves and right. have something in their portfolio. So is when you can, when you feel that one concept artist can do it all, and is self content and is not the major basically a big villain that you need to create. Where you know production designer, VFX supervisor, director, they're all going to. Um, Think about it for months, right. basically. So that's that's a different type of concept for me um, because it's a whole creative process that is not just about you, but also about the people, the filmmakers. Yeah. And it's working in collaboration with them. So here we are going to take our time and here we are going to be totally collaborative with the artist as well. So when it's a smaller... Um, you know, secondary character or something, and and you can you give it a role for one concept artist so just just enjoy. So sometimes I say, you know, enjoy. We have a half day of of discovering fun, or enjoy. This is only for you. Or, but we at MPC, um, I mean, the MPC attracts all the big shows at the time. Yeah. Um, it still like does, right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it's it's huge now, yeah. but. Already back at the time, that that this um, software that they created on in a house software that allowed that was the best crowd um, crowd software at the time. So they were getting all the final um, sequence. So we had all the big bad guys to do as well. So that that was that was great um, to get this opportunity. Um, but I'm I'm losing what I wanted to say now. Um, it's just every concept has its own kind of life. Some concept, they, you know, that they are not going to be, um, they are not going to have so much attention, or, or the, the filmmakers will not pay so much attention. It doesn't have to become their baby, and they really enjoy that artists express themselves, yeah. production designer, the effects supervisor as well. But they all have their vision. 
And when it comes to the big budget, uh, VFX or design, well, they need to talk, is basically, you know. So it's a collaboration, and we are going step by step with them. So yeah. that's my philosophy, and is. And that's where basically, yeah, I kind of kill all ego. <laughs> but guys, let's do a big like receipt, mix it all, and just just showing eventually what is the aim of that concept, what is the aim of the movie, and trying to really, I mean, my job is really to understand what the filmmaker wants, what yeah. is their style, what is their taste, and work for them. Exactly. So, and then to communicate that to the artist, so it doesn't it doesn't lose track of what is the mission of that concept. Yeah, um, and that's what I said. Like it, it was, it was very interesting experience to me. And I I've worked with production like after we worked together. I I had like a sort of, it's it's a mix. You know, you're gonna have production designers where, um, which are basically like very pragmatic, like not pragmatic, but very cons conservative, like work in a very conservative way, where it's like, mm -hmm. this is your thing and you, you're you going to do it until you die. <laughs> like for a whole show, you're going to do this one thing and you literally want to die sometimes because like, fuck, I'm, I'm working like for months on this one thing, like give me something else. But then you're also going to have like um, production designers and art directors like you where let's work on something together and it's kind of interesting um, experience because I think what a lot of people don't realize uh, or you know a lot of artists especially younger ones don't realize is like in films uh, specifically how much effort goes into making films it's 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 a huge amount of people and you're gonna have you know director and and you know director of photography producers and everyone like when you when you really see see what's going on on the set you then realize like oh my god this is like way larger than my my little my little drawing that i did in photoshop you know yeah it, it's it's uh, only the the second movie that i'm working for production designer like on you know on the client as we used to say on the client side right because before it was 10 years of vfx yeah um and now, now I can see it all. <laughs> and now, but it's a miracle. Every movie is a miracle. And and I got the chance to sit on this table with all those filmmakers and and the, the people who put it together. And what I found incredible is all those people. They are like risk taker, challenge. They love challenge, and they are there because they have never done it before. Yeah. Because they are they are going into an, an adventure, no. Yeah, and so they are, they, are, they are doing things for the first time. Also, they know the process and they know, you know, how to. Budget. But there's so much risk. There's so much thing that goes off. That <laughs> and what what they what they all have in common is the flexibility that they don't hold on to things like crazy, and they they're really working in team in that sense. Um, so. Yeah, I think now having seen the two sides is just a movie is mad. It's just pure madness. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. It's it's very intense. It's like, um, and I, I have like a newfound appreciation to filmmaking because uh, you know you, sometimes it's so easy to go in and when you watch the movie, uh, you get to be like, oh, um, yeah, this movie sucks. You know, like the story was horrible, acting was bleh. You know, music was alright, but the visuals usually it's like the visuals were great but everything else sucked but one of the things that you quickly realize when you're on a set is that you, like if they can shoot about a minute or maybe 30 seconds of the like of the movie in one day that's usually like yes that's a success right but then at the end of the day you end up with because the schedule is so tight there's so many millions of dollars that go into the production at like the shooting part is the most expensive part there's so much money going in that you know like any failure it's like well we kind of have what we have so now it's editor's job to sort of like salvage the shit <laughs> and um, the effects yeah exactly and the effects <laughs> like yeah let's uh let's replace uh that person completely there um but yeah um it's it's very uh it's a very eye-opening experience when you when you get to see the set and 
and it's sort of like coming back to the concept art idea where a lot of especially new artists would would be very protective and maybe sometimes ego uh driven about their own work you know where it's just like oh it's like it's a it's a my it's my thing you know it's like i want to do this and then when you get to experience working collaboratively with someone else it's just like it's a shock like what someone's using my parts of my painting in this in this production that i'm getting paid for to do you know yeah, I, I, I actually, I, I just can't understand, and I live by the example of, of um, a graphic supervisor, production designer, directors that actually even don't have that ego. So, I'm like, why, why, why someone would have it if they don't have it? I mean, they yeah. have ego, don't worry, huh? they, they, they know how to defend themselves. I'm not taking, but, but they, they really appreciate as well the people who are working for them, and they are... Um, I mean, I learn a lot from them, and um, they have a certain, I don't know, they don't defend constantly their thing. They know that yeah. they need a team to, to make it happen, and their name is going to be on that. So they are, they are not that kind of protected, I, I think. Right, um, right. The, the people I've been working with were great people. And they were not full of fear that, oh, my idea is not, no, <laughs> it's like, oh, what is best? I mean, oh, I've been very lucky to just work on um, um, with, with the right kind of people. But they, I think, I think um, with the years of experience, you just be more flexible and cool down and you just want yeah. that the boat goes into destination with everyone else, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, well, it definitely, it definitely can be hit and miss with production designers. There's just like so many characters there. Um, I yeah, had, well, I, I had experiences <laughs> with guys that you know. I had experiences. With, I was pretty lucky with production designers I worked with. I, 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 um, I had a chance to work with um, Owen P uh, Patterson, uh, Darren Guilford. Uh, who else? There was a few more. Um, there was a few more, few, few more names there, but. All of them were were pretty good in terms of like you know, this this sort of collaborative effort, yeah, working yeah. together and and you know it's giving you gi giving you enough space to 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 do your own <laughs> thing, but also like having a really specific requirements on what are you supposed to do. Um, but I've heard Th some stories <laughs> though. I've heard some stories about some really interesting characters out there too. That's um, why you're giving us stories now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, some of, some of those names cannot be mentioned. That's yeah, really that, that's obvious. <laughs> uh, it's such a small no, industry. Like, you don't want to... We keep it like the, the, you know, we keep it like the, the DVD uh, <laughs> uh, at the end. It was just fantastic. It was one <laughs> and that's it. Yeah, yeah you smile, uh, you show your white teeth. That's great. it. No, no problem. No problem. No. Um, no your, it's like how's your experiences with artists, though? Like, do you do you get um, to have like artists with large egos uh, a lot, or? Well, I I, I tend to not hire them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, you need to have an ego, but well placed. Let's say, right. like a pride. You need to have a pride of doing uh, the best job that you can. Yeah. And, yeah. Of course. And, um, yeah, to not deliver, like, I remember have, having artists that uh, say, why, why is that? I mean, you would never deliver that with me. Why are you delivering it to others? This is half of what you can do. Like, yeah. sorry, what, what's happening? And they are just demotivated, yeah? So fair enough. And my job then is to motivate them. Um but I had eventually one or two people who have ego where I have to learn as well to deal with them. Right. Um, I think, um, yeah, ego is, is, uh, is coming also about unexperienced and fear. So I like to work with people who have experience. <laughs> <laughs> just, just because we can focus on the job, you know, we can focus on having fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like, like as 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 I'm managing artists and art directing artists, I need that their energy is focused on the right thing. Um, I, 
and I want to have a good time. I want to do a good, you know, tennis match where we don't lose the ball. You know, it's like right. Uh, so, so eventually, I had uh, I come across with people or trying to uh, hire people, and and when I feel a bit of a too much of a ego wrongly placed, uh, I kind of like walk away. You know, just just simple as that because. Uh, because I've got a lot of pressure as well on my side and um, I need to make my company work. I need the, that it uh, delivers to, to the people who are believing in, in uh, um, and me and the team that I put in place. Yeah. So the balance of putting people together, like when you're on location all together, is, is you can see that one person that has a wrong mood one day will affect the whole group. And the whole creativity and everything. So, for me, I was trying to balance. I had like beautiful introvert people that had gold to give. And if you had like two, um, and I'm saying that I'm extremely noisy, <laughs> <laughs> too noisy people, but too much in the room, they are going to shy off and never f- show what they have inside. Yeah. Um, in the same time, if you let let them alone they are going to sleep at some point, you know, they need to be a bit, oh, I'll wake up. And so it's, it's, it's constantly shifting um, energy of the day of like getting there and um, let's give a purpose of why that day should be interesting. Yeah, it's, it's a fair amount of like balancing um, how much freedom you want to get uh, to an artist to express themselves in a way that they can get the best out of them versus like, mm-hmm where that does this stop or where's the moment where it turns into babysitting you know yeah it's it's very difficult and it's years of experience and uh, I, I would I mean at first like 12 years ago when I started to have artists to, to, to our direct I would be um, so scared myself to fail right that fucking mic- micromanage yeah now is it's not about micromanaging I've got Hello, <laughs> and I've got I've got artists working for me at the moment. Uh, lovely, <laughs> and um, and I'm here sometimes like doing this, you know, like uh, no, because because it's not about micromanaging. It's about this is the function of that concept piece. If you miss it, you miss it all. Yeah, and and the, the confusion is like I think, and and the frustration would be always if you think that what you do for the vision of others, like directors, um, the effects supervisor, production designer, and all that, um, you're going to express yourself only. Yeah. This is not about that. It's about above. It's about, it's about the movie. So I think, I don't know, it's like... When I, I pin them, no, 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 come back to that. It's because the function of the concept isn't done. And that function is like, if you do a concept for a pitch or a concept for a VFX or a concept for a production designer, it's different function. It's different yeah. way of rendering it because it needs to give information for the next in line to use it. Yeah, exactly. And not just expressing yourself. It's it's really so, just like uh, you're building foundation for everyone else's work to be easier, not harder. Basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you want to maybe? Beauty, oh, sorry. I, I yeah. And, and the beauty of it, I think, is when an artist had really much fun, and he really gave his love to the piece. Yeah. Then it shows, and then the next in light get excited. Exactly, and and then they want to do as at least as much as good or better, obviously, and yeah. that's where you push every, everyone forward. Um, so, yeah, that's that's what's happening at the moment with with the production we are working, and I, and I can see the result, you know, in like in real, and I'm sharing that with artists, and I'm oh look, look <laughs> what you've done, like look at what they're doing, it's you know, it's cool, you know. Yeah. There's a lot of respect. From what is being done by the concept artist to the props maker who are doing it after, you know, I can you can feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely works. Uh, you know, 
it just it's just like for me that's something i've learned over time it's it's you know you have to have your ego in check as an artist in general like it's not really if you want to do something really great um and, and and be a real owner of it then then go for it but but you know working on a production that's not the place to to try to prove yourself that you are the best shit you know you should prove yourself that you are the, the professional that any task that's given to you is something that you can handle because you, you know you have to have your own amount of trust towards whoever is hiring you that whatever decisions they, they are making they are making it for the best of the film yeah. uh, and 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 it's really that you know so it's it's very i found it's very hard to accept for for quite a lot of people i from from what i talk with artists and and see how they react to things and the artists that i work together with uh, it's more it's more apparent in games i would say than in film um I think games, I've mentioned this before a couple of times, video games have way more ego, um, especially on artist level, than uh, than film. In film, it's like, it's usually very old school, old school people on the very high positions that they, they because of the body of work that they've done, they can just afford to be like assholes <laughs> in a way. <laughs> Yeah. But it's it's understandable. Like you work your way up, and then you know that whatever you do uh, is gonna work until you fail. And then you know it's usually it's usually that's wh that's what what it is. So, mm -hmm. um, I was thinking if we could go through like maybe some of the older projects that you know you've you've done, and and you know uh, basically talk about your your thinking process when you work with artists. You know, uh, we have your okay. website up, so I don't know if you, if you have anything in there that. We could uh, so or or we go back straight to um to basically uh, the NPC art project at the time. Um, to me. Ravi did a beautiful job of like promoting um, get the success to promote all the art. I mean part of the art, mm -hmm. and you can see there's still some stuff that I was participating, and then. Um, and then after some that he's doing. So R Ravi is for for people who don't know him. He's also the guy who hire. We have few there. Sorry, Oops, up. <laughs> we have we have few around. And Ravi's in LA right now, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's yeah. Been yeah. Texting it's... me a couple of times. I was yeah. like, I was like, oh man, I, I don't know. I was like, you fucker. <laughs> Ravi, <laughs> Ravi is such a cool guy. I want to get him on the on our cafe too. But he's just he's just way too busy. This guy yeah. is a workhorse. That, yeah, I think he's, he's, he just gave his life for it, you know? Yeah, uh, exactly. The, um, the story with Ravi, if I permit, and he, I hope you would not mind, is like we were looking for someone of his caliber. And um, uh, as I was traveling, at, at some point, I, you know, I did breaks to re-inspire myself. So I did a break in traveling around the world. Mm -hmm. And I got to, you know, New Zealand, and here was at already, uh, because he's, he was a concept artist for production side, and at the time he was trying at Weta to, you know, discover the VFX side, and he worked there. So I met him, and, and basically the way he talked about artists, he said, okay, this is the guy who can be an artist. I, um, uh, I was really happy that, um, say, I pointed him, this is the guy. You know, yeah. Just just because um, it would be there if there's any, and you need to stand up from time to time <laughs> to, to protect your your hurt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and he's totally this type of guy. Uh, so I'm really happy that uh, he's totally developed what we, we we started over there. And I only I only um, heard a lot of good things of what he's doing and how he manages things. So. Yep, but hey, that's it. Is 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 like um is um is there for no one anymore? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So yeah, basically, you can see already there's few artists in there. Um, yeah. There's the work of um, Andre, um, Mark Tompkins, mine over there, um, Stéphane Le Valois, and and here there must have been some. Is it Philippe Goliot or Olivier Pron at the time? Um, 
well, there was, you know, all those people have grown up and now they are like doing major uh, things. So this is the luxury that when you have like, I, uh, you have done already some work on um, previous Harry Potter, uh, the VFX supervisor of the movie um, liked what the idea you could develop and they start to ask you um, how, how you could develop other ideas. Right. So I'm not allowed to speak, in, I think, in particular because it's pretty, it's <laughs> yeah, it's Harry fine. Potter, like there's only one version. Yeah. There's only the book yeah. version. Yeah? yeah, yeah. So we keep that way. But here's like um, very loose, um, loose, <laughs> and stylish um, sketches of exploring, like as a story bit, you know, like a, a moment of a sequence that would give uh, the, 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 the full um, mood of, uh, of the sequence. So, um, we would do these kind of things, and because here it's like so different. Sorry, it's, it's mixed. Here's about finding a mood of a sequence. Here it's about very photorealistic um, concept for an effects that you need to be able to beat financially. Right. So there's no impression left over. That's not about that. It's about how you can make it. Yeah. And why every time you do effects like. More it's, photo, more it's photorealistic, you know, um, better the VFX supervisor, sorry, well, we are back to another one, better the VFX supervisor will start to imagine how they can do it. Yeah. So yeah. it's very important that here, for example, um, I don't know if it was this one, but with Mark Topkins, we, we had some, some stuff that, um, I planted over there is um, my love for nature. We were uh, shooting a lot of raw material. Um, I don't know if it was that from that, maybe not, but it's, it really looks like. We did burn for another concept a lot of papers uh, out on the roof of NPC. <laughs> um, and um, we would have a lot of material. Um, so that maybe we had collected a, a bank of, of realistic texture of elements. Um, like for monsters, we would shoot fish, for example. It would stink everywhere and, and I would be banned <laughs> from, from the <laughs> shooting room after because it was the same level of the client who was thinking total. Um, Coming into the office, it's like, what is this smell? <laughs> I don't know. It was, it, was ter- it, was, it was fantastic because we had like a giant pulpo uh, that has gorgeous colors uh, that we get from the, um, the, the fishmonger outside London. And we had a, a, sm- a small shark. We had like a lot of things. And we, we took some photo um, for the texture with the specular and with the non specular, which allows after to. Um, pass it on to the guys who are already the, going to make it for real. So yeah. you basically prep all your texture at higher level. So what we use, we could do it after. That's the most important. What we, we shown at concepts, in terms of FX concepts, uh, we were not shooting in the feet of the VFX supervisor and his team to make it happen. We actually provided also some some texture oh that's cool so basically like for instance in this example you you, you would yeah, done by andre yeah you, you you guys would basically like shoot the you know burning paper and whatnot but besides having that used in the concept that would be an actual asset that could be perhaps later exactly. later used in the movie yeah for vfx yeah. that's cool yeah that's very that's... very pragmatic uh, approach you know well this um um, the the little story because I, it's my opportunity to acknowledge everyone. Um, when I first started the art department at NPC, long time I think it was two thousand um, three five. I don't remember. Um, there was there was this guy called Olivier Pont. Mm-hmm. I was I was gone for a year on on the production client side. Um, and they they replaced me by the time by by, by this guy. <laughs> when I came back, oh yeah, we 
we are opening, you are going to open for us the art department, uh, but is the guy is going to work with you. <laughs> the guy is fantastic. Because yeah. the guy, <laughs> you know the guy who did all the, the, the cities on Garden of the Galaxy, and you know, is <laughs> uh, in love with nature. And he was talking to me about fluid dynamics and uh, and he knew, he studied it and he knew how to um, sketch it and, and uh, in a photorealistic way and all the movements were um, understandable by a VFX artist. It was not just make up, he actually looked at it. So yeah. basically, us together sitting, he made me um, observe nature which I passed it on and had the other guys observe nature. nature. So um, eventually uh, someone like Mark really dedicated himself to that and was able after to, to draw first like the, 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 the Japanese anime artists, you know, little sketch of fire or water that, that would actually look like fire and water in movement so we would concept the effects in in in, um, in a sequence, mm -hmm. not just in one picture. So this would eventually, not this case, but others um, would. Um, I don't know if you have over there. Like yeah, that's that's for example Mark Tompkins. That um, also he has a fabric, but he would do a sketch that would emulate all the animation. But right. he spent a lot of time studying. And all that comes from the, the, the study of free dynamics, the, the, the love for it, the love for nature. So when you start to really observe, and um, you, you get a lot of information, not just about movement, but also about light, about the quality of the colors in, in the infinite of the texture, you start to like what you're doing also. You know? Yeah, yeah. Don't you find it interesting that, you know, um, the best, the best in the industry, let's say artists that are really inspiring, they never, almost never find inspiration. In, like they never look at concept art for inspiration. They always look about, look into some weird places that normally you wouldn't expect that you're going to find inspiration in, in, right? Yeah, yeah, total. Um, I, I think, I mean, you need to know what's going on um, out there. Um, to understand the fashion and the trends. Right. Uh, fashion and trends also being guided by the technology, and that's why I came to you, my dear, because at the time the trend was model because of these particles, um, and none of the guys I had at the time would have the time to, to learn the software and make it as brilliant. So Thank I just <laughs> look on the internet and say, who, who basically mastered the tool and give it life? And out of the cool stuff over there, you already like not just using it uh, in a good way, but you were putting your sketch on top of it and etc. Yeah. You were already transforming and playing with it. So I said, eh, you, you. <laughs> <laughs> that was and that I, was quick, by the way, because I, I I remember watching uh, tutorials and um, postings from Scott Robertson because Scott Robertson is the guy who actually. Uh, came up with the idea of, you know, using replicators for like weird, weird stuff, you know, he, he made like suits with it and, and whatnot. And it was like, I want to learn that shit. I want to start doing it, but, but like do it the Mache way, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, I picked it up and literally the, I posted it. I, I can't believe, I can't believe it, I posted it and like two or three days later, I'm getting an email <laughs> from you guys. Hey, well, we're working on little. I was like, "What? A, that, what on earth is going on?" <laughs> I mean, I have to acknowledge that um, I was. I'm not looking so much as concept as I should, uh, because as you say, I, I take inspiration from somewhere else. Um, but I also was relying on um, the other guy of the team who really were uh, aware of what's going on, and when I had to get the hot guy at the time sometimes like hey who is it <laughs> and they would pull out a few names and i would recognize the uh quality i i was looking for and at the time your quality actually was to break the repetition so also we wanted the repetition and right. that was 
really, uh, this, I mean, we found this trend for uh, for all in so many other films after. But you break the um, the patterns, so you gave it a more organic and natural and realistic right. thing. So that's the thing is that you you look at who <laughs> who have understood in his technique how to get an equivalent of realism organic or you know nature yeah so you have to um not use the tool for the tool but use the tool because you want to say something and that's the all different things exactly. is that means you have a vision of what you want to accomplish and you're kind of like making the tool uh, doing it for you eventually there's cool accidents that nourish your work and that's great but that means you have a vision and that that's that's important. Yeah, I found uh, out that um, when you're when you're trying when you're trying to open up your mind to different areas of whether it's yeah. like new expertise and learning new tools or just basically looking at art from completely different perspective, where you're trying to find references and ideas in areas that you would n never ever expect to find ideas, you know. It's mm -hmm. when you actually, that's when, what, what, uh, that's exactly what happens, as you said, like you, 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 ex you start to find ideas or the ways mm -hmm. to express your ideas based mm -hmm. on that additional piece of knowledge that you found in those weird mm -hmm. places, you know, as you mm -hmm. said, like Mark, uh, his interest with nature allowed him to do you know, something that not, it's not only interesting and realistic, but it's like not only interesting in, the, in terms of a concept, but it's also ha having a, a tangible functionality to it. You know, it's like it's something that, you know, it's going to work because it's based on something that already exists yeah. and works. And we understand like every human being understands it because it's nature, you know. Yeah. And, and for that, I've got a trick that I always like go back um, and I wonder if it comes from Olivier again um, on your Photoshop pixel <laughs> and on your layers if you respect the truth of um, you know if you if you do a, a fog or if you do a glass mm -hmm. and instead of like doing a layers with a cool um, um, filter like you know overlay and, da, 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 and that, that that looks cool but if you need to do a lot of version of it then and you just start to change you know few layers on top of each other then the effect is gone it doesn't work yeah 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 so they want to have like different texture of it and and that was just an effect that works on the build of, of few la layers that work kind of together by accident sometimes um, so it's not repetitive and it's instant news, news is great for speed drawing, fantastic. But if you have to do a lot of version, you're losing a lot of time. But if you build or if you thought about your fog being a thin hair uh, and, and not something opaque that mm -hmm. doesn't let go through the light, if you decide that this is actually a pixel of that much opacity, yeah, mm -hmm. then it lets through, then you can do whatever changes, the effect will always remain because it's physical effect. Like the physicality of the, 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 the glass of the fog, you yeah. give it to the pixel and no tricks. And that then works all the time. So if, if you just observe nature, you can't get it wrong. And on top of that, nature is way more inventive than us. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's it. It's like, way smarter than we ever be. <laughs> so it's, you've got so much to go there. Um, and after, if um, I don't know how MPC would be happy about me just like sticking, <laughs> staying, on, staying on their, on their uh, websites. But um, um, I, about inspiration, there's, there's that. Uh, nature observing is is dynamic um and then after is all kind of form of art and i think like every artist wants to go to theater or you know so all my time is is uh, actually um about looking at other creators yeah and um 
and get excited about you know what 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 new ideas they have and how I could eventually bounce back in my own field and everyone I think does that but maybe different quantity so I go more for um, the 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 collision of of words and arts than than just looking at my own field um, and I would say. I had at the time, or I'm always have artists that are really aware of what's going on, and uh, I yeah. kind of like get them to complete me, because the, I know that if if uh, they only fit themselves with what has been done, they are going to end up by design that somehow people want. There's a bit that is reassuring because we've seen that, and the clients will be happy, it's fashion and trendy, great, but it might be a copy, and yeah. in a, the land of do something that we never have seen before. This is no, no forbidden. So uh, always coming back from scratch is my, is my guide, is my rule to be sure that um, we are not going to copy and do a subversion of someone else. Right, right. And he's not just screen, by the way, but that's fine. I can, I can switch to mine in a second. Um, Are you, you have lost your, uh, the screen. Yeah, I think uh, it stopped sharing for whatever reason. I mean, you're uh, at the go-to meetings uh, on, oh, your, okay. on your Sweet. end, but that's uh, that's fine. Sure. We can always switch. Sure. Um, to start. Yeah, if you if you tell me after, and eventually in the conversation, I will come back showing a few things. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I can show you just if otherwise is one picture that inspires me total. Let me actually try to make you a presenter. Yeah. Do the minute of philosophy there. Um, if, yeah. Do you get that? Uh, no, it's still it's still not sharing. Sure. I don't know if. Oops. I don't know if um. If you would need to restart. Oh, sure, uh, sure, 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 sure. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry about it. I we I can always switch to my my own screen uh, here. Uh, we're gonna have a few questions too. Um, oh yeah, there we go. It works now. You get? Perfect. Yeah. Okay, that's that's my my research about nature. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go. Woo! Okay, that. That oh, for who me. designed that sentinel? Oh my god, it's so beautiful. <laughs> is, is that this one? <laughs> are you are you looking at it? Um, uh, now I see a black screen. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> see just a black screen? Yeah. Or you. See Oh, um, shit. It wait, might wait, be, wait. it might be. I don't know. I saw, I saw, um, I saw a website, and then, and then there's. Black okay, I'm just going to put it there. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. So that is not. And if I do play, it will not work again. If I yeah, do, it might be some 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 bug or something. I don't know. But this yeah. this works fine, I think. Zoom, one, yeah. So that, Google Chrome, again, a real plan. Um, 21st that, century technology. Do you know what it is? <laughs> do you know what it is? Um, this, ex what, are you, what I'm looking at exactly, I have no freaking idea. Okay, I can only imagine it's like, it has some, I don't know. Honestly, honestly, I don't know. That's a golden, uh, in particular, gold trace. Oh, okay. And and so that for me, basically, when I, I had, you it know, looks like a digital art that someone did on DeviantArt, but no, this is pure nature. <laughs> this is pure nature. It's a scientific, scientific picture. And what I, what I see there is just like you start here on the project, let's say, and that's all the ideas that you're going to get. Yeah. And some are completely loose and they go to die very fast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then eventually you've got other people who are joining you and then they start to create emulation, you know, and they gave, gave themselves some, uh, some, some energy. And that basically it's, is what, when I started to see that, I started to, to see the creative process as free dynamics and how people could help each other. Or when you, you basically create a, a strong target, like a brief that is so clear, yeah. Mm -hmm how all the people are fusing their ideas and they start to coagulate 
all together and how it's, it's, it's gaining energy and it goes stronger. And right. these phenomena, I've seen them over and over. I was, I was um, uh, trying also to make the creative process of the whole team better together. But that is like just a picture. It's not, it's not what I'm saying, but it inspires me and yeah. to get new ideas. So, yeah, that's it. That's just the minutes of philosophy. <laughs> you can come you, back. How do you, what is your, because like everyone has a different approach to references, right? Like most, unfortunately, most of the artists will just go to art station and, you know, what, what is cool right now? I'm going to do that. And, and you can see that that happen. Like whenever uh, someone like Vitali or, you know, some, some really good artist posts something original, there's always like hundreds of copies of it because that's pe where people find inspiration, like other artists' art. You know, I, I'm curious, like... How do you learn? That's the thing. You, 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 you learn by copy, you know? I mean, right. we copy our parents, so that's how we learn. Fuck it, you know? It's, yeah, of uh, course. As a, <laughs> as, as a child, you basically, yeah, exactly. you, you mimic the environment. But I'm curious, is like, because you, one thing that, um, when we worked together and and when I met you and we worked on Guardians and, and X-Men is you had a very very different way of approaching you know what the reference is you know because like for instance you, I, I think I only have few uh, you know supervisors whether it would art directors or um, production designers that had like a very 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 different very mm -hmm. original approach to reference uh, mm -hmm. very often it's like yeah it's like what's trendy today and let's use that <laughs> but you, you, the stuff that I was getting from you was rarely ever concept it was mostly like weird references that you were finding yeah. somewhere and I'm just curious like what yeah. is your thinking process when you're um, when you're searching okay. for those it's, it's first the reference is to create a communication with uh, uh, the filmmakers and the people who are in charge of um guiding the vision, uh, VFX supervisor, mm -hmm. all that. So first is, a brief for me is always incomplete at first. So searching for um, photographic uh, source material because you work in the movie and at the end the result is photography, it makes sense. If it was a cartoon, it would be different. But first is to create a communication. Yeah. Um, so we understand, and we, every every mood board was a question because I know these guys have no time, and um, I would arrange every board um, in kind of like a story of a texture, a story of uh, um, elements that needs to compose the picture, a story of framing, a, and and bring them together for comparison in a very of fully attractive and simplistic way. Right. So it would take no time just to get, wow, that's that's looking cool. And and with an easy comparison, oh, that's what I prefer. Oh, actually, that's what I want to say. And then first, it's, not a, it's about finishing a proper brief that um, eventually we agree on what we want to really create. All together and where 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 is the zone we need to spend our energy and our creativity what is left because um, they have eventually a vague idea they have right. like certain taste uh, they come with a kind of open mind at first but when you really when you dig they're going to repeat themselves and their pattern and their taste most right. of the time yeah uh, some are true explorers but others not so I try to first know with who I'm going to work with. And because I always see it as a shared experience where I can also learn, win something and, and have fun with, you know, playing with someone, I want to know with who I'm playing. And yeah. these reflections are questions. They are not expression of my only, of my taste, of my understanding. Um, there are, um, I'm, I'm basically through that process of searching images, um, asking a lot of my, of questions, what, what I think is missing and, and ask them in a clear comparison way. So I'm, I'm going to try to get an answer for 
the missing, the, you know, in the mathematical formula, you've got some missing dots. I want at least to have a kind of guidance because if we are going to work in a short amount of time and make all our energy and give all our love, I don't want to have us to redo it 10 times for nothing. Yeah, yeah. I went through that process when I was concept artist myself where you don't ask the right questions and you redo it over and over and over. And no matter what is a great movie to work when you start your career, if you do 400 <laughs> versions of something, you just hate it after. <laughs> and that was basically when I saw, I experienced it a bit because I didn't know how first asking the questions. And then I knew how to do it. And then I saw other people, like when they were not coming to the art department, how many variations have you done? Oh, like 50. Uh -huh. 50 <laughs> variations. Are you crazy? <laughs> no, you do three, three kind of raw variation and you should eat it, you know, because that means you have cared about the vision of your director, supervisors, yeah. production. You have cared to share, to nourish yourself with, uh, you know, uh, each other and have fun and not be only on your own. So this is, this is where I start asking questions. And eventually, uh, you, you work on the aesthetic that you like. I actually, at some point at the end, I was also working with Stephen Wong's because I saw he's like, um, he could find pictures that were way off radars, like surprising <laughs> you. What you want is to catch the attention because again, you want to engage a conversation with people who have no time. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So how, how you excite them? You don't have the time to do the super mega piece of art. And, you know, so you start by engaging with them with ideas that are already, yeah. you know, and, and then you see how much risky they want to be or um, how much conservative they you want to be. And then when you see, oh, guys, this is where we can really create, don't lose your time for the rest because the rest, they know it and it's going to be like that. So yeah. this piece is yours and have fun with it. You see what I mean? Yeah, it's like finding your 80-20, you know, like finding which 20% of the uh, references that you're going to provide is going to deliver 80% of the results, you know? Yeah. And it's sort of like building a map, like a roadmap. Right, we have to go this direction. I agree with you because like with film, uh, everything is so tight in terms of like how much time you really have to create and how you know the, the, the spin around and everything uh you, you don't really have the luxury of of exploring ideas for months like you would have in video games and uh, oftentimes especially if it's a big production you're gonna have like a lot of time to figure out what you want to do in film it's like when when it's already in production uh when it's you know all right we have we're doing prep for 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 shooting and you know that there's a scheduled you know filming day you only have a finite amount of time that you have to really cre uh, create within, right? And, and then when it goes to VFX, it's even it's even more tight. It's even more crazy, isn't it? Or I don't know. I have this experience. Uh, also, um, at the moment, for example, I'm 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 working with Andy Nicholson, who um, who did Gravity, Assassin's Creed, and mm -hmm. uh, and. And this guy knows so well the process that he knows when to start it. Right. Again, it's a big, big creature, a big design. Uh, you know that you have to start a conversation with the director and, a, and basically it's about their creative process as well. Um, so they, if they are experienced, uh, they will know when to start it so they also have time to get the conversation growing yeah. Because it costs so much that they need to be sure, yeah? They need to have explored, they need to have convinced uh, producers and all that. So I, uh, I found that also when you start um, from pitches, because I did a lot of pitches at the time, um, you already start to engage a conversation and then you've got the first green light and then the second green light, and every time you add on that conversation to redefine and redefine, so actually you have a lot of time. What they, what they do is that no time, you create fast, 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 you know? <laughs> that's, that's a joke somehow. 
uh, it's just because a day of concert artist can be expensive, actually. So, <laughs> so they wanted, they I see, wanted. I've seen it happen, though. Like you know, where you know, it's it maybe maybe it's it's a luck or something that you get to work on the production. I've seen the, I've seen it at both ends. I've seen it where, yeah, you have time to develop ideas and especially like when you work with a production designer that has a lot of experience. I found out uh, found about that. I would, a lot of experience brings you to a point where a production designer also builds a lot of trust with artists. So yeah. instead of you as an artist creating 50, 50, 60, 70 sketches and like trying to bust your, your ass to get a lot of work done, you're going to have to create one or two and you know it's going to work because yeah. because like, yeah, you you ask the right the right questions and and whatnot and and uh, the and designer you just put a little sketch on the corner of the table to, between you and say, oh yeah, you get it, yeah, I get it, and yeah. then the trust is there and you 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 have the time. Yeah. Basically, is 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 if you don't spend your time to try impress the person who's hiring you, if if he hires you, it's because he wants you. Yeah, he's already impressed. <laughs> so. so if you don't spend your time trying to prove how good you are, how technical you can be, but you decide to work together, then there's the time. And yeah. then you can you start to see that if we actually really see that there's no time, and I've seen also directors understanding they were asking too much and relaxing the deadlines because they want you to not fail. They want you to do yeah. it well. well and they if want you to the film fails. That's pretty obvious. So that's it. So basically, if you get that conversation and trust going there, then then you start to be between clever people, You're not trying to impress each other, but trying to really work for the movie, make it the best as you can. And then it's uh, again for me, it's fun at the time. But yeah. the thing is, when you get like, oh, I'm working on a on a, on a big movie, oh, I, I need to prove, I need... Um, basically, you're going to maybe use some techniques that are time-consuming, and you want eventually to finish a picture even without starting the conversation. Yeah, because you need the wow effect, as Olivier would say. <laughs> <laughs> wow effect. No, it wasn't me, I think. No, he's saying, he's, here we're selling dreams, that was his sentence, and I would say... Well, in fact, <laughs> um, and sexy. I want sexy pictures. Yeah, I want sexy picture because you always have to sell an idea. Yeah, but that's where um, it's really demanding on on the concept artist that you need to be be able to get a sexy touch on your speed drawing. So with just two lines, you sell your ideas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then eventually you go you can go all to the very fine finish that says. This is a, a so much millions dollar movie, and um, you're going to have like big success marketing, blah 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah. So, but but you don't need. I don't know. They they want to have ev everyone wants to have uh, been surprised and impressed, and that's what this industry is about. Yeah, we are selling emotions. So everyone will be asking you. I'm. I, I'm waiting that the artists work with me are going to surprise me. I love it. You know, it's like, mm. well, he didn't, I didn't thought about this, but that's cool. You know, everyone wants that. But it's about learning to not give it all at first thinking you're judged every second. Yeah, that's you true. And that's something I, you know, I personally went through, uh, you know, myself by, it's, it's an experience. Like you, you learn not to, not to basically overkill yourself on the day one uh, where you're like, oh my God, if I don't do this or that, I'm going to be fired. And it's like, I, I get, I get that there's, um, uh, there's always that, that, that uncertainty, you know, because like, it's not only for, unless you're like a top of the line, an artist that gets so many requests that, you know, you can just, ah, uh, fuck it. You know, if not this, then I can take that. Um, which is very rare, but in most cases, artists when they get um, they get hired, it's like, wow, like I'm gonna work on this project, and there's always this sort of like scare, as like, ah, oh, shit, like I wanna I wanna impress, I wanna be, I wanna prove myself, because like, what if 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 I'm not doing this, then I'm looking for another thing, and it's it's not gonna be an easy task for me, so. 
Yeah, and that's always there is always a, an element of that that's basically driving artists into a point where just they're only trying to impress instead of like work uh, to get you know the results that you were talking about. You know. Yeah. It's it's I think it's um it's shifting your mind to say it's a teamwork movie is a teamwork. Yeah, exactly. I think once you, you know, once you put that that phrase teamwork, it's it it should definitely make you, make you think about. So I've got actually oops I'm going I'm just going I've got my boss with me. <laughs> <laughs> we can wrap we can wrap it up any time by the way if you no, no, if you get any okay. calls and whatnot we already, then we already have worked uh, um, <laughs> um, we already have worked and and the work is due on Monday <laughs> <laughs> all right so it's all good um, no it's actually very interesting gosh we, we need to get this just to talk in, in between each other because we are too busy look at that <laughs> <laughs> crazy i mean you've done so well with I, i've i've been very much impressed by uh what i mean all the people i've hired are so <laughs> sorry <too>. um <laughs> ah, do you see my screen or not because you can't i can i can edit it out i, I can actually hide okay. it no worries so, okay up up down yeah, you can, uh, you can, uh, you can. Nobody's seeing the screen now, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll switch to my screen, by the way. So. Yeah, no, I, I've been extremely impressed by all these. Um, gosh, <laughs> you too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's it's sending me a lot of funny picture of these days. All right. Uh, it's cool. But anyway, um. Uh, I think I think you guys have done a, a job incredible by by uh, uh, communicating, helping uh, all this uh, young generation, hungry generation. <laughs> well, actually, killing it is like there are a lot of talent out there. Um, I, I mean, that's jumping about about mm -hmm. pedagogy. Huh? You want eventually to talk about that, but. Um, I don't know. I've been impressed anyway. Um, I don't know what to say anymore. Let's, Ask me questions. You know what? Let's, let's actually jump into questions. There's quite a few uh, okay. from... There's, 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 there's a few questions. There's a few questions yeah. from, from the audience. And there's a few interesting ones too. Let me actually scroll to find where they are. Those are some st few stupid questions too, which happen all the time. Uh, nobody asked for brushes, though. That's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, look, I'm I'm one of the art director. Already gave all the good stuff for the concept artist, and I've got nothing else to me. I'm just doing. But <laughs> basically, my job is is just doing Mickey's on top of their concepts. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's gonna relate to one of the questions uh, that was here, which is basically, uh, you know, if you're looking for freelance concept artists, but I'll I'll maybe refer to this question when you're looking for concept artists right because you, in most cases unless you're with the art department you're gonna look for freelance artists from around the world yourself right yeah like right now so i created um um after mpc i created uh it's a young company mm -hmm. uh creating a company that uh that provide visual developments and and uh as i advisory services for a bfx company and so on and basically, I'm project based, but I'm just, I'm, it's two years now that I'm building it, and I take step by step very slowly and carefully to uh, set up the, the ground. So when I've got some, a production designer <laughs> calling me, Virginie, crew up! Then that's where <laughs> I crew up. And I, I usually take uh, up to a month to crew up. Um, so um, I, I, I think. I uh, will crew up uh, when I'm mean, surely around September or something like that. But otherwise, I don't know. Is um, I'm I'm um, I'm looking at uh, inspiring myself at the moment with other projects that are um, um, on the different fields. But when I crew up, when when I've got a request, um, I actually I'm happy to um, to. 
to hear from um, experienced art directors as well that um, that could help me growing that company. But that's a different subject matter. Right, right, of course. But for instance, like when we when we worked, um, uh, let's say uh, uh, for visual effects. When you work for visual effects, how often do you think uh, companies like MPC or Framestore? Or, any other companies that do VFX uh, go with freelance artists instead of uh, studio? Gosh, in my time, like it's different. Like you have already to ask them. I can't talk for them. Uh, I I think you they have a co they have a core team of UC and and they when they have too much work or when they need someone specialist, mm -hmm. then they 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 would go for a senior guy basically. Um, yes. I think working remote. I mean, I'm I'm working remote um, and with artists all around the world. It works very well when the people have, have had experience in the field, in the companies, or on the set, because we know straight away what we're talking about. When I take uh, youngster talent, like um, like recently, there are beautiful discoveries. Um, and and um, I've got a lot of pleasure, but it's it's also a lot of work to make them understand what is the pipeline. Um, right. So I think it, it would be the same, I suppose, for when I was there. Uh, you hire experienced uh, freelancers. Um, Makes sense. Yeah, because you can't, you can't take. I mean, at that level of movies, you can't take any risks. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. You don't have the luxury to experiment. Yeah. You basically need the solution, and you yeah. you're gonna find so, artists that that basically will deliver that solution. Yeah. And what I do is I, I when I take someone I never had like movie experience, but I really do believe that they have a true talent there to offer and a true motivation. Um, then basically agree to be checked, uh, you know, sh sh shake uh, in their way of working because they will have to adapt to, um, you know, English way of doing movie <laughs> and yeah. American way of movie. So they will be ready to uh, compromise and have no ego. <laughs> <laughs> then then um, I basically, uh, we agree on, on the test period. And if the communication goes well and take it well and, and they, they they unleash what they have to give, you know, the, 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 their talent. Then then we carry on, and there's some beautiful stories um, that is happening um, on the, the last movies. But I try to get always like senior guys uh, as well. Makes sense, and I, I guess uh, it's only when like you're really impressed with your ideas, where you 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 sort of like strike the chord that production designer or art director is looking for. Like, I'm looking for something, like you have this idea in your head as an art director, I'm looking for something and then, bam, yeah. this is it, you know? That's, that, that that's your best chance. Yeah, the thing is like, what, what I already do, I, I tailor team, and so I already pick up artists that ca that correspond to the movie and, and, and the people who want that team for the production designer on, um, so, for their taste, I really try to make. I'm a matchmaker, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it doesn't mean that the person, if we don't, if we don't work well, is not necessarily because it doesn't have talent, or it's just because it doesn't work as well uh, in terms of of taste uh, with um, with a production designer or with with someone else. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. Like you might have. There's artists uh, that are great, but they might not necessarily be the, the right fit for the project, you know, so. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, I already do uh, basically talent hunting proper. <laughs> That's yeah, true. Yeah. How, very careful. Another question was like, obviously sort of related to what we talked about, but it also elaborates a little more in terms of like, how, how do you think photorealism or photo photoreal quality of your work, how, how important it is uh, in order to get hired, especially well, for film, you know? 
Yeah, it's kind of becoming a bit the norm just because uh, producer need, I mean, the marketing aspect of concept art is more and more important and they need to communicate very early on right. uh, what the film would look like and people who, who are not artists uh, will understand and, and have the wow, you know, so they can relate it. So I would say it's, um, it's really important now Sometimes you've got um, um, very artistic um, um, production designer um, directors that just love it, uh, and they just want a style that they, they just love to see, and yeah. it can be very painterly. But for practicality, for bidding process, that you really understand what you're seeing, so you can imagine how you're going to make it, and um, you know being accurate. Um, on, 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 yeah, on, on what the time steps and, and, and money would take, then the photorealism is already a great tool. Yeah, it's. I found it. It's almost like yeah, it's a given. Like you have to, you have to really produce high quality, high fidelity work in order to even you know uh, compete. Especially when you know looking at. Uh, I found it very eye opening or. Well, in in a way, like if you if you go to any any art art websites, you know websites that host artist work, like ArtStation or uh, ArtStation is probably the best example because they're they just grew up to be so big and there's like pretty pretty much anyone everyone is there. Um, but you can quickly see like the quality of work has changed over the last couple of years so much. Almost everyone can do photorealistic work, you know. Yeah, and that's where exactly you need a speed drive <laughs> and very painfully <laughs> and loose. Basically, we want it all. Yeah, <laughs> no, we want it all. And for yes, we want it all. <laughs> it's, it's just because then, yeah, but photorealistic that takes time, and and it comes at a certain point of the process when sometimes you actually need a painterly uh, piece because you don't want uh, your director, production designer, VFX supervisor, or, or you don't don't want to give it too much. So it's really come down to the function of the concept and when um, when it, it, it's just as to give a, a vague idea and, and not decide, this is actually it. So people can already see, oh, it's going to cost a lot or it's going to be very complicated to make. Yeah. So it, you have like different function for every concept, but ultimately if we are doing movie. It's, it has to, to, to be uh, integrated to a plate so at the end of the day, you know that you're going to finalize pieces, photorealistic pieces. But saying that, speed drawing is essential tool to, for the ideas and we need it as well. Yeah, there's still so, like a, a right amount of work that's going to end up being just I, a sketch, you know? Exactly. But then that's where I will, I will hire artists, speed drawing artists, but then just for that. Yeah. If the artist has the uh, wide range to do both um, and realistic, and then I can hire him more for longer periods. Makes sense. Yeah. It actually answers the next question <laughs> uh, almost completely. So that's good. Um, let's see. I'm just looking at if there's any other questions that we could, could go through. There's an, or interesting ones at least. Um, Uh, how do, how not to burn out and stay fresh in full time, long term project, uh, game or movie routine uh, often kills creativity. Um, there's there's two things. There's the routine or or the overwork <laughs> because <laughs> you've been given too much. A again, uh, thinking that you're part of a team. Yeah. <laughs> is uh, how to not, I mean, the, the, the routine is like, um, if, if you're part of a team, obviously people are going to challenge you, so you're going to wake up, <laughs> or have to share with you, and have, you know, the, um, how to, I don't know, okay, well, I'm, I'm doing a weird stuff at the moment, but it's too long for, for, for uh, to, not being burned out and repeat myself, 
uh, I I kind of like get some almost sabbatical uh, months or year um, traveling to mm -hmm. totally refresh. Uh, I was lucky to be able to afford it. So now I know how to travel and to make it cheap. But uh, <laughs> to basically do something totally different, I was uh, basically um, starting to dance uh, a lot, six to ten hours a week at the time. Wow. Um, because it was giving me a balance, something where I couldn't think. So I would not burn out by overthinking. And always the same and the same over and over and over, same questions and things. Yeah. So, I don't know. And and um, and again, like, if it was burning out by overwork, well, if you're part of a team, you can talk. And as together, we found a solution. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I it's found not it... all on the artist's shoulder. Exactly. So, and I, I found it, it's like when you, it's... It's not like shifting responsibility. It's just like realizing that, you know, you're working on a project together with the team. And it's not only that you have to come up with those ideas. And I, I found where we have discussions with other people when you when you engage in conversation, it's when you actually spark the interest into the project again, especially when mm -hmm. you when you really get burned out, you know, like because uh, Let's let's face it. Every single project you're gonna work on, there's gonna be a moment where like, fuck, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> you know, I haven't seen, I've, I haven't seen from the, all the projects I worked on. There was always on every project there was a moment. It was like, ah, like when it's gonna end. But but there's, it's it's a matter of how you approach it. Obviously, you want to approach it professionally and and keep going. But it's also you know, you don't want to you, you don't want to burn yourself by by going in the same route that got you to that place in the first place. You know, you kind of want to find something that what can it, add a twist to it. You know, yeah. So there's there's this twist, but so coming back to um, when you're overburned by overwork, I think the 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 best relation I have with ex, I would say experienced artists is because they know their job. Yeah. Uh, when I ask too much, they are telling it to me. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I say, oh, whoa, 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 I don't understand. And they're actually explaining me how they're going to make it, which totally reassure me that they fucking know what they're doing. <laughs> I can <laughs> trust them. Also, they are another part of the world. Um, and, and then from that, as they're talking about what they're going to do, sometimes I readdress, I say, but that you don't need to do it, or that yeah. you can cut that. Or okay, fair enough. It's too much. Um, let let's let's be step by step with what is the what is the next step of what we need to be found or validation validated, etc. So when they know how to talk to me as well, <laughs> yeah, and because, because they they are interested to to communicate uh, what they are going to do, and we exchange ideas. I've got um, also. One thing is when they take a brief first, and you can see where the experience is, is like um, with, with Stefan, for example, we would talk sometimes an hour, an hour and a half, just over one brief. Why? Uh, because as we talk, we already start about ideas, and we end up doing weird like gesture of <laughs> Skyrim. Yeah. Because, because we're already like creating, oh, it could be this, or it could be that. But as we talk and you have an experience, we can visualize it and say, actually, not so good idea. And we move on and we already develop something. And suddenly, instead of like doing so many variations because we don't know where to go, we have actually a clear, firm um, intention and, and vision. And on that, you say, okay, on that, you only need a speed drawing yeah. for now. Yeah. You know? So you get a strategy with, with your art director normally, how you is going to communicate that to the client. And um, and then because you've got clever people in front of you as well, and you're doing the same, then like director, production designer will answer you in the same in clever way and, and finding the best way that you can achieve the best. So again, if you stay in your corner, this will not happen and you will feel the burden of the world on your shoulder. Yeah. But if, and I'm not talking about selling your idea and try to argument 
like argument is 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 out of is is wasting time yeah you is, know, it's stupid <laughs> is is what needs to be achieved what at this stage um what is the best best um way to represent that idea so it sells it and yeah. everyone agrees on it and the movie can move forward um Obviously, sometimes you are asked to do impossible task, and you say, "Guys, oh, you're just going to do the <laughs> round back, and, <laughs> and after it will be good," you know. <laughs> but there's sometimes there's crushing time, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a conversation. Always, always makes uh, you know uh, makes everything easier, and and I found out there's almost rarely ever stupid question you know you, you might you might be thinking like fuck i don't really want to ask you know him or her this question because I, it's gonna make me look stupid but mm. that's like a misconception that i found it's like even asking the most ridiculously easy question is basically putting it's not only it not only takes a little time it takes less time to ask stupid question and be at least confirm that it's a stupid question and you at least know that you're moving on in the right direction versus like even on the very basic things not knowing then trying to do something for hours and then come back and like dude you totally misunderstood <laughs> you know and it's it's i think it's a burden on on both sides and i found it's again like as as stupid as it sounds i i never had anyone telling me telling me like dude you're asking stupid questions it was even the, the most simple thing, like, are you, are we using black and white or colors, you know, like <laughs> easy stuff like that. Even, even though, again, it sounds really stupid. Um, <clears throat> well, it's not at all because black and white is composition. Exactly. Colors, exactly. You know, the things to validate <clears throat> so not at all. Exactly. And I found it like, yeah, a conversation and, and, and that brings just more, uh, it, it just makes it easier for people to uh to get stuff done the right way uh, for an artist it's it's asking is the best way to make sure you're, you're not making mistakes you know um mm -hmm. yeah uh, I, i'm gonna read one more question and and you know i don't want to hold you up for too long um there is one question that is kind of interesting um and and it's basically related to, and I don't know if you have experiences with that yourself, and it's not really much related to what we talked about so far, but um, when was the last time either of you saw a new artist enter the industry, either from a total change of their profession or uh, from the age later than, let's say, 30 years old? So basically, you know, just to distill it to something more simplistic, is like, I, I guess the person is asking if I'm not an artist and I'm already already over 30 do I still have a chance you know to be to be an artist in the industry uh, it's almost um, it's kind of an irrelevant question in the sense it's all about attitude and um, yes there's it's 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 always easier when you start younger uh, because you get the technique out of the way um, yeah. and it takes years to get the technique but if you just want to go in the industry there's also a job that requires less technique I mean concept artist nowadays is, is fierce on the level uh, of skill set um, because it includes um, 3D Painting is, is so much. But you always like can um, focus in one area and just getting very good at it. And after is really a question of attitude um, and dedication, right? It, like how it, much effort are you really willing to put? Yeah, but it? if you're just so nice to work with, people will want to work with you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's like um, I. If if you enter uh, late and you are insecure, and and um, then that can be a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. Because at the time, it's like we are there to, you know, we are there to play. We are there to make the thing happening. 
So the production have no time for for the feelings somehow. Sometimes, you know, it's like a very harsh sometimes for that. So if you're just happy to, you know, you work your ass off uh, uh, two years and you get to a technical level that you can be hired in the industry uh, and you start from there and I don't know, it, I, there's no rules, um, I think. If you if you're a happy chap, full of energy and positive, there's always a place <laughs> because we are we are eat you know we are scavenger of motivated people. Yeah. Um, yeah. We need to believe that this mar- miracle to make the movie is possible. If we don't believe it, forget about it. If you're coming with all your doubts, no one will want to hire you. Yeah. You see what I mean? it's like. We are here to make something that is going to be challenges anyway. So we just want people who are believing in themselves uh, and, and, and believing in the project and just, just, just work on it, not thinking too much aside. And it's quite harsh, that, that, that's, that view of it. But, um, no, it's, it's very valid, though. It's, you, know, it's, you don't want to fool yourself that you don't want to go in one direction with like, oh, I can do everything that I want to. Uh, and just like full, be a full believing it, but w- without backing it. Uh, and then you don't want to go in the other direction either, saying that oh, I'm over thirty, which means I cannot do anything anymore because it's like I'm already past prime time. That's that's, no, that's a bullshit it's, argument, it's, I would say. It, it it's always of a being strategic about it. It's like you want that, okay? It would take time, okay? Um, can I afford time? Um, what are the steps to be done? How much I need to learn? Um, and then from there, um, who I need to contact. Um, I mean, I, I heard stories of, of people working in, in Pinewood. They, they say, they say oh, I spent 10 years to try to hit the door. And finally, I'm in. And sometimes it takes time. And you've got some people like, you know, Jama who just, <laughs> in five years, he goes, <laughs> okay. And, and when you like- look here I am. <laughs> the, the, the thing, the, when I, when I see him, um, he's actually he, he's, he's, he looks relaxed. <laughs> I don't know if he is, but um, he's he's and always. Jama, by the way, started late. Like he's, I think he's older than me, and he's been in the industry like three yeah. times less than I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is is that is? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, it's for him to say exactly uh, the years, but it's just few years, and he hits straight away. But the thing is that the attitude, positive attitude, and and uh, and the philosophy he has towards challenges. Well, I'm going to learn basically. That's yeah. what he does, you know. And he's, he's somehow he's got this confidence in him that he's not scared. Um, and, uh, and that's and what's why the worst thing that can happen when you enter the industry it's like wow you just gonna it's not like you're fighting tigers and trying to survive in the jungle you're you're just doing work the worst thing that can happen is just like it's not gonna work out for you and then you're gonna have more chances eventually you know? if, yeah if it's the story that you say to yourself that's the people also you're going to meet you know if like you yeah. think that you're, 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 the, f- the world is full of tiger you're going to meet those tigers uh, because you're going, yeah, to to get the, the sign of the the prey, so the tire are going to come, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's really it's really a matter of attitude and 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 yeah, obviously dedication. But and and maybe again, knowing what you are, why you're there. If you're passionate about movie, then that means you're going to ask the right question. You're going to say, I'm interested in them. What in that industry? What are the title of the job? What can I do? Um, what in the art department? Can I be a draftman first? Can I be, which is not concept artist, but you're totally part of the making and you're assisting to incredible um, things. Um, so you you inquire what is there from yeah of your reach basically, and you start there. So and if it's concept, um, because you you you're just like full of talent. Um, then fucking do it because <laughs> we need you. <laughs> you know, you know. Um, I'll, I'll tell you in trust. I mean, I used to. I, I was struggling to find stories where it's true, but it is. And I know a guy, and I'm not gonna mention his name yet. But uh, I, on the films that I worked on, there was a there was a production assistant. You know, a guy who just basically orders food, 
make sure make sure that emails are sent you know just basically sort of like the guy uh, the, per the person that basically just has to do everything that no one else wants to do yeah. you know like especially in the art department but it was and this person now i think uh, he already has quality to to be a set designer I, i'm not sure how it's how it's going for him i think i think he he's going that direction but he was a person that would always ask questions he would always be there like super positive and work with the you know with the designers and go in and like hey can you you know especially when you th there's always like a downtime during during the office hours where you know maybe you're waiting for feedback or something and he would find that opportunity uh to connect with people and hey can you show me this little thing here he wouldn't be like aggressive about it like hey like constantly coming over your desk like fuck like dude get out of here give me a break no he would be like very very open to like hey can you sh like if you have time i would really appreciate it if you show me and he would learn how to do basically set design you know in the in yeah. the very and the and from the professionals so you don't have to be an artist to to become an artist uh, that's basically basically what i'm trying to say you can find an avenue where you can still work, you can still provide for yourself, but it, you you're just funnel yourself towards towards that industry, and then try to just you know soak it in, find opportunities. If you have a positive attitude, and if you really want to become someone, you have to look for opportunities. But when the opportunity come, you have to be ready for it. So so make sure that yeah. you you putting all the f the right effort towards it. You know so. Yeah. That, that, that reminds me about uh, a certain guy called Kim Frederickson. I'm sure no one knows him. This guy is like working like on everything. He is so good. And this guy, I met him um, in Golden Compass when I was uh, starting as concept artist uh, like 10 years ago, something like that or more, 12, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, basically this guy came as a runner. And at yeah. the end of the production, so he, he did runner, draft, no, maquette, draft. And he, because all the concept artists were a bit too, exp I think, expensive at the end, we just finished our contract. And then he just took on our job in one movie. He was a concept artist. But what happened is like, he was not that young and he had work on all fields and he was talented and he brought actually 3D. And, and other software where it was at the time uh, very um, all done by hand. So he came with a crushing technique. And in one movie, he went just there. And yeah, it's the dedication, so, isn't it? Like he just, you, you could tell, like this guy really was, wants to do it. Was he, he had it already worked him ha himself out. And then he found that opportunity and it just made it happen then. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. One of the one of the stories of the people you don't really know, but they are like they are doing the job. <laughs> um, yeah, story stories. Yeah, you always you always stumble upon those people where you know there's there's always you're always gonna meet people that are always negative and they say like you, it just cannot be done and they always end up being in the same place. They always just say shit cannot be done and they they end up just being an average complaining person just being out there and just complaining that nothing can be done but then you're gonna meet person that you know they're they're motivated and they really want to do it and they're smart about it you, you don't want to be stupid about it either like you don't like i'm gonna quit my job today and, and no time <laughs> yeah you don't want to do that i found this book i don't know virginia if you if you read it um by tim ferris it's called four hour work week um, I, I, I bought it, I started to read it, but it was at the time when I was reading so many books that I, I didn't <laughs> uh, kind of finish this one. I think <laughs> if you read that one and then you read Deep Work, it's yeah. it, it will just basically maybe motivate you to, to you know, if you want to be an artist and you aren't, it's a good sort of recipe to, you know, do it in a smart way, in a way, you know, because... I think a lot of people mis misread uh, the four hour work week. They think it's it's a book about just decluttering your life to a point where you don't have to do anything, which can completely be done if you're smart about it. But I don't think that's the essence of it. I think it's removing things that you hate in life 
work included, like the work that you don't like to do, but you have to because you have to pay bills, and then finding something to replace uh, to replace it with that you're really happy to do, you're really inspired to do. So if you're if you're if your dream is to be an artist and if you love doing art, you know, if you do it as a passion and, but you're stuck with something else, I, I think, you know, that book could give you some ideas. No, it's not, it's not a recipe. It's, it's just ideas. And, uh, but I found it really interesting and I, I can tell you, you can definitely make it happen. It's just a matter of how you approach it. Um, obviously it's also a matter of whether you're going to be lucky at the end of the day or not, because you know, what, there's a lot of things that can happen in, in, in the in the year or two where you just might might be lucky, it's gonna work out and you might just have an unlucky events in your life that just basically gonna put a lot of setbacks and you know, and you're you're not gonna make it. So it's you know there's not never a, a, a full recipe that you follow and, and, and the, there, boom, you're you're done, you know? Uh, it's always like a, a gamble. But it's, I think it's a gamble worth taking. At the end of the day, if you're um if you don't take chances, then you're going to regret that you never took any chances, you know? Uh, and mm -hmm. you're just going to be always in the same place you are. And I found it true for when I'm teaching. Uh, when you teach, you always uh, expose yourself to basically, that's how I work. This is the idea. Here, here is the recipe of how to basically make me unemployed, you know? Just, just follow that. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's like you're exposing yourself, releasing everything you know. Um, and then you force yourself to be in that uncomfortable place when you have to search for something new and search yep. for, for, you know, whether it's inspiration or, or, or new techniques or whatever that is, but it basically always keeps you sharp and always keeps you motivated, you know? Uh, so. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I teach myself for, but in the normal schools of animation and, yeah. uh, so for, kind of for 18 years, I did a few days. Uh, per year over there uh, and also no matter what I would have done as big movie or whatsoever you've got this young generation that comes and uh, not impressed at all <laughs> <laughs> so you, you also uh, it's, it's interesting that uh, giving what you know also uh, teaches you how to simplify your own process and, and, and really understand what, is, what really matters and not. Um, it's a win-win, I think. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> yeah, it's this new generation. I, I was, um, I, was um, I thought at the beginning, a long time ago, uh, thinking that they would always keep me sharp on the trend. And actually, I found that not. Yeah. Uh, they keep me sharp on the energy and the motivation. But on the trend, I have to <laughs> check them because they tend to just copy and repeat what is the easiest access yeah. and, and not really uh, study in deep uh, the, uh, I mean, the art or things like that and just get stuck in technique. Um, but I think it's a normal process. You start by the technique, you master the technique, and then after you move on to get your own style and, and your own ideas. Um, it's a normal process, but yeah, they, have, they, they, they give you a lot of motivation and, and <laughs> you know, move, move yourself, you know? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> what you say to them, to, to you. <laughs> you know? So it, it gives you, yeah, it, it keeps you sharp, definitely. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's, let's wrap it up here. Um, man, we, we just went through almost two hours of conversation i can't believe the time's flying okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. i'm sorry uh, I, well. I kept you so long i i know i i try to always limit it to about an hour but it's just like always conversation kind of kind of goes on and on it's just like you can get carried it's, away it's, you need to catch up with your friend more often <laughs> yeah it's it's awesome we should we should talk more it's always like uh, well, I'm, I'm really I'm really uh, uh, curious uh, about everything you're doing I think you guys are are, are doing something extremely positive so yeah always what? trying uh, you know I've learned a lot from community and I, I always yep. feel like it's my responsibility to sort of give it back and and you know that's that's what I'm trying to do at least it's 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 a learning experience too I found that when you're a teacher you're also uh, once you start teaching, once you start, you know, uh, sharing, you get so much feedback that you learn more than you would ever learn 
by just being your, by yourself, you know? So yep. um, it's always, always positive. So, all right, let's wrap it up. Uh, thanks for everyone who decided to join us today. Yep. And uh, Virginie, thanks for, thanks for sharing some time with, uh, with me and, and with, with, with my audience here. And yep. uh, yeah, uh, can't wait to talk some, t- talk some more. So yeah, yeah, we need to talk about a, a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, de- we'll definitely we'll definitely do that all right i'm i'm hitting i'm wrapping it up so thanks guys uh take care and uh have fun <laughs>